here, Sam. Kevin, what's your satisfaction level with the defensive performance and the job Mark Snyder's done to this point in the season? Well, you know, we've we've had our ups and downs. I think, uh, you know, um, certainly last week was um, was really down. Had a lot of guys who were out. Um, you know, there's something that we try to evaluate every week and uh, try to get the right people. We've we've made some some uh, substitutions. We've put new people in there. I think last week was. Uh, um, a tough situation because of uh, two of our better players did not even dress for the game. Uh, Josh Walker broke his foot in the second quarter. You know he's he had surgery yesterday, so he's probably done for the year. Um, the guy that really came on here in the end. So you know you have to. It's something that you have to evaluate week to week and evaluate at the end of the year. To the right here, Dave. When you are evaluating the future of your program. How do you kind of know when it's time to make a change or when it's time to keep the status quo in terms of your coaching? You know, I, I think uh, from my standpoint, you've heard me talk about in the middle of the year, um, you know, we, we evaluate things weekly. And then uh, at the end of the year, you know, I'll sit down and, and evaluate where we are. And, um, um, you know, for and, and, and make decisions on, you know, what's best for our program, what's best moving forward. So, um, you know, right now our, our focus, my focus, uh, this whole team's focus is on um, LSU Thanksgiving night and um, trying to send 17 seniors out the right way at, at Kyle Field. And, and that's, a, a, you know, that's, that's enough based on what we've gone through this year uh, to, to get this team focused to play uh, on a national TV game at, and on Thanksgiving night and, and really have our seniors, um, you know, in the season, a regular season, um, with a good feeling instead of the ups and downs that we've had all year and, and uh, could really do a lot for us going into bowl preparation. Sam. Uh, from your experience in these first two seasons, what makes uh, John Chavis and that LSU defense so effective? Well, they've they've been very very effective. They've been uh, athletic. They've been uh, they've had a, some different people on the field. Um, you know, they've uh, they've done a nice job. I think uh, it'll be interesting. He's done a nice job this year too. You know, they've uh, um, they have a scheme that they believe in. They've worked at. Uh, you know, they're, they're, the whole team. It's kind of a similar situation for us. You know, we've got similar records. Uh, we've been uh, uh, playing a bunch of young guys, have had some solid wins and had some disappointing losses, both teams, and uh, have, have, you know, have been a little inconsistent at times um, with, with young players on the field. So, uh, you know, I think defensively they're, they're solid. You know, they've got good players. They've got some young guys in positions that have gotten better this year. Uh, but, uh, you know, John Chavis, is, uh, his record stands for itself defensively and as good as there is in, in the country. Down front, Kate, and then we'll go to the left, Christy. Can you give us uh, any updates on Miles, Ivan, and uh, Alaka? Uh, uh, Miles and Ivan, I would say all three of those guys are, are, are probable for this, this, this game. Um, Josh Walker is out, as I said. So, um, you know, Alaka's dealing with uh, – um, more pain than, than, than anything else. It's a pain tolerance situation. I was just going to see how long that was going to go on. That was a nice song. That was a record. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ivan, we'll see, and, and Miles, you know, I, th I think he'll be, he'll be ready to go for sure. And it, well, sorry, you don't mind. Sorry. The hot topic, you know, Texas A&M could play Texas in a bowl game. How would you feel if that happened? You know what, I, I, I'm going to be excited whoever we play, you know, just because it's a bowl game. And, uh, you know, right now, I think, uh, you know, as I said before, we're, we're, we're focused and I'm focused on trying to beat LSU, you know. So uh, that's, that's, that's a big deal in this program right now. And I've been around it long enough to know that whoever, whatever, I think we play. I don't have any say so in, in what goes on. So, um, you know, whoever we play, we're going to be excited to play them. I'll just put it that way. We'll go left, Christy. 
considering the tradition here at A&M, how excited are you to start play again on Thanksgiving since you, you took a break from that and just kind of renew that, that tradition here? You know, it's, it's good. I think uh, the way I understand it is that uh, we're going to play at home, I think the way it's set up right now on Thanksgiving, and we may play Friday nights in, in, at LSU. Um, uh, there was some discussion about that, but uh, you know, certainly at home for us, Thanksgiving brings back uh, a lot of memories for our fans. I know our fans are excited about it. Um, you know, some coaches are uh, are a little a little different about it. If you haven't done it, you know, because of the whole. Uh, what do you do? You know, everybody kind of misses Thanksgiving for families and things like that. But uh, having been here before, I understand how that works and uh, what, what the tradition is, what the traditional value is of a Thanksgiving game, Thanksgiving, uh, particularly night game. And, you know, like I, I, I talk to people in, in recruiting and, and our current team and, and everybody around, you know, Thanksgiving is a great time, is a traditional time for family, friends, and football. And uh, I think it's a great honor to be a part of not just sitting there watching somebody, but somebody's got to play. And uh, why not us in a great venue, um, uh, 100 and some thousand people at night. You know, you got the traditional NFL game starting during the day and then moving into the evening. So, you know, it's, it's – uh, it's something to be excited about, something to be proud of, and, and I know our guys are excited to be playing it. Far left, Chip. Kevin, you guys have had a lot of success on the road. Why do you think that hasn't translated as much at home? I don't know. Suzanne? <coughs> yeah, I was going to ask that. You've got a really good road record, and then your home record is not. It's like you're flipped what other teams usually do. But it's not a losing record. I'm not saying that. I'm right. Saying it's that not it's, as good as the road record. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Yeah. It's something we got to, like I said, something, trust me, it's not anything that we're, uh, we don't recognize. It's not anything that uh, uh, we're not working on. And it's not anything that uh, um, we've, we've started to, to look at what we do, you know, so um, it's, it's something that uh, we're evaluating and, and we're working on. Go far left, Cease. Kevin, do you consider LSU a and main rival? And uh, what do you feel makes a main rivalry? Well, um, you know, it's, it's different for me, you know, having this is year three. So, you know, I understand uh, different thought processes and what rivalries are. You know, for people who have been uh, involved in, in Aggie football for years, they might see things a little bit different. Um, I can remember being at Oklahoma and growing up and watching Oklahoma and Nebraska and, uh, you know, thinking who would have thought that at this point that that game doesn't even exist. So, uh, you know, rivalries over the course of college football, the landscape of college football have changed. That, you know, that's just to name, name one, you know. And uh, um, when you change leagues, obviously, uh, you know, you, you get involved in certain games. Certain games can be close, but proximity usually weighs into what becomes a rival uh, rivalry. So, you know, I don't know. I think uh, anytime you move a game to the end of the year, um, you know, I think you're insinuating something there, and and, and particularly on Thanksgiving. So, um, we'll see. We'll go to the back, Daryl Bruff, and then Sam. Coach, do you take anything away from the LSU Arkansas game and how Arkansas was able to to score, move the ball against LSU that maybe might work for you guys Thursday night? I hope so. All right. So you want me to tell you what that is? We, we just let Les know what we're planning to do. No, I, I you know everybody said I, I said when we played Arkansas that uh, um, which seems like six months ago right now. Uh, that uh, that team was it was getting better and we're going to get somebody you know they lost by what one to Alabama and us in overtime that team was coming along and just kept fighting and and um, you know I, you you also had an LSU team who 
uh, spent a lot of energy the week before in a really, really close football game. Um, so, you know, I think uh, uh, it was a combination of two things. So, you know, there's no doubt that they have the same thing, that we have similar records. They want to end their year on a positive note just like we do and uh, put yourself in a, in a, a, a decent bowl scenario. And uh, so there'll be a lot of, of players playing. You know, you got a lot, a lot of guys in this game uh, from a region of about uh, 300 miles playing in this game. You know, they've, they've got, we've got guys from Louisiana that, that have pride in Texas, and they've got guys from Louisiana and Texas that have pride in this game. And there'll be a lot of families celebrating Thanksgiving in Kyle Field. And, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll be able to celebrate after the game. We'll go Sam. You just touched on that a little bit, but you guys pulled out a guy in speedy and out of Louisiana. But, and I know you guys recruit quite a bit against LSU. How difficult is it to get that kind of talent out of that state, considering the kind of strength that LSU has over its home state talent? Well, you know, it's that, a, that recruitment in particular. Too. Yeah, well, you know, we've you know we've got a number of guys from Louisiana, and if you look, I was just looking at them today, and um, you know, they basically they all play except for. Um, Noel Ellis, who had a, a medical problem this summer, but played a little bit as a, as a freshman. So, you know, Jashazer, Everett, Speedy, Julian Obioha, Floyd Raven, Ivan Robinson, Sean Washington, Donovan Wilson. Okay, all those guys play for us. So it's, it's important for us to be able to evaluate in, in Louisiana. And uh, obviously those, those guys have come here and have had success or, or having success. And uh, you know, there's there's a number of guys that are going to be playing on LSU's team that we tried to recruit it from the state of Texas. That uh, some young guys that are playing and playing really well for them too. So that's an ongoing process, I think, between uh, between us both. There's a lot of really really good football and a lot of well coached football, high school football in the state of Texas and Louisiana, and, and uh, the battle for for um, that talent. Uh, is not just between the two of us, but a lot of people. But, you know, obviously both of us would like to keep our guys at home home and then go over and try to steal one or two guys from the other guy's state. I don't think that's any secret. We'll go far left, Christy, and then Gabe. Um, I know you said that Miles was probable for this week. Is there any chance you'll tell us what's wrong with him today? No, I don't, you know I don't update injuries, <laughs> unless they're, they're season-ending ending injuries, right? Well, you told us about the Shazer, so I thought maybe. Well, he had a brace on. I was just, everybody was worried about him. But he was going to play. So, yeah, I'm sure you are. So are we. How about that? All right, Dave. Trust me, so are we. Kevin, could you give us a three-game assessment of Kyle Allen, the good and the bad, and then really what you think of his future moving forward? Yeah, as, as you know, leader? I think you, you saw us play pretty close to the vest in his first outing. Um, you know, he, he came out a lot more uh, relaxed, which is sounds kind of crazy at, at Auburn. Uh, I thought, uh, and, and moved the ball well, um, has, has been able to check some plays and do some things. Uh, like I said, operationally, he's gotten, he's been good from the beginning. I think uh, offensively, uh, the package, him being able to uh, really get to more things, um, He's more comfortable with that, and uh, I would say that uh, you know he he he's been. I would categorize his performance in three games as solid. You know, uh, it hadn't been uh, over the top. He's had his moments. Um, I don't think it's been disastrous. The ball security is is part of it. The interception last week went through, you know, what went through Speedy's hands. So, you know, it was an on-target throw. And, and uh, so, you know, from an operational standpoint, you know, that, that was a play that was, could, was big because it went the other way and not a first down for us. Uh, so I think he continues to improve. He, he continues to understand what we're doing. And uh, we continue to understand what he's capable of. So, yeah, that'll be uh, – um, I, I would characterize it as being solid. Go to the back, Courtney, and then KO, and then Brent. First of all, my apologies for the Pandora music. And secondly, that was you? That was me. Hey, right. but at least it was old time rock and roll music. So, 
Um, anyways, you spoke about the battle between LSU, Texas A&M as far as recruiting goes. Usually recruits don't base their choice off of one game, but considering you know both seasons, like you said, ups and downs, how big would a win against LSU be considering also they're after a couple of your top guys? Yeah, you know, they're, uh, they're after a couple of our top guys. We're after a couple of their top guys. So, you know, it, one game, uh, you know, for some people usually doesn't matter. Some guys it does. You never know. But I think performances matter. Uh, I think uh, um, atmosphere matters. And whenever you have an opportunity, particularly, you know, some guys uh, that will be at this game uh, are, are coming – uh, that have never been here before, uh, and, and uh, you know the atmosphere, everything that surrounds it, uh, the ability to to play and how you play. I think that plays a big part of it. So, yeah, you always want to have a good performance, and obviously winning helps everything. And uh, you know, but whether or not one game really matters to a, a recruit, you never know. But sometimes it does. Go back, Ko, and then Brent up front. Coach, relative to the. Uh beginning of the season, how healthy are you? And how important was this extra time this week, not just in preparation, but getting everybody back on their feet? Well, it's, you know, we're a different team at the beginning of the year. You know, you saw us play um, really since the last bye week in, in, at Auburn. Uh, we had a bunch of guys on the field that didn't even go to South Carolina, and uh, let alone play play. So. Um, you know, health is a relative issue. You know, uh, Ivan's been, Robinson has been really, really good against uh, strong running teams, you know, and, and, you know, his leadership has been something that uh, has helped us at times. And when he's not healthy and when he's not in there, it, it's hurt us. So, you know, he's been a big part of, of what we've been able to, to accomplish. And I think uh, you've heard me talk about Malcolm. Kennedy, you know, and, and his ability to be healthy and not be healthy. So, yeah, this this time is, has been good to, to heal up. Uh, but we've got some young guys like Josh Walker, who was starting for us, that, that are out. Uh, somebody's got to step back up. But we're, that's not any different than uh, a lot of teams at this point. You know, we, you have some years where uh, things go right injury-wise and other years where guys get, get beat up. And that's where the depth of your program has to – has to be able to to match that, and but uh, you know a lot of these guys that are beat up right now are are young guys, and um, we we've got to manage them physically uh, for this game because this will be a very very physical football game, and our guys understand that, and uh, you know we've got to put them in position to to be able to to handle that physically uh, going into the game, and then and how we play and, and cut it loose and, you know, get some of these young guys ready to go this week. Down front, Brent. The Shazer told us earlier he was a dirt, dirt bike rider when he was a kid, but he decided along the way to start playing football. What has he meant to your program <laughs> in terms of how he's developed? I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, we didn't either. That kind of threw us off a little bit. Maybe that's why he wears that big pad on his arm. Well, he, said, he said he got hurt yeah. on a dirt bike. That's why he started playing football so, or kept playing football. But anyway, in terms of what he meant to your program, uh, you know, as a senior here. Yeah, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, has obviously – since the day we've gotten, he's played, you know, and you, you go back through his career, you know, three years ago, he's one of the few guys that um, in, in our secondary that has uh, played in those big games three years ago. You know, I can't speak to the year before if he played, but you go back to the play against Alabama, he'll always be remembered for that, for the interception. And, uh, you know, and here I, I give him a hard time and say a real player would have stayed in bounds and went – 100 yards, but we were just happy he picked it off. Uh, but he, you know, he, he's a guy who has been quiet, has 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 you know had his ups and downs, has played through injury, uh, and uh, has has really, really I have a lot of respect for him battling through. I think, you know, what he has is is a very, very when it happened was very painful. And uh, to manage that, that during the week, uh, we've, we're, we've been very, very sensitive to that. And for him to continue to play and, and, and 
with that brace and, and do the things he's done, I've, I've got a tremendous amount of respect for him. To the back, Darrell. Coach, I know Speedy's <clears throat> come close a couple of times this year, breaking a kickoff return. He did that last week as well. What's it going to take for that guy to take one to the house? One more block. It's been one more block every time. So, you know, I know that uh, um, our return game has been really solid, whether it's been kickoff return uh, or punt return. I think it, it, it's kind of interesting. Once you have a guy like that and uh, guys start to see, hey, listen, if I just get one more, if I just hang on this block a little bit more, if I just do this, then we can score, you start seeing longer and longer returns. Um, but yeah, we'd love to get him loose for one. I don't. I know Coach Banks is is getting frustrated with the one more block situation, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I thought overall we have uh, our return game's been pretty solid, and our coverage units have been very solid against some really really good returners. So special teams wise, uh, we've got a number of players playing uh, that are starters, and that are uh, you know Floyd Raven has been. Um, just unbelievable in kickoff coverage and in, in punt coverage and, and uh, um, against some of the better returners in this league. And I think what you've seen the last couple weeks is, you know, the ultimate respect uh, from another team. You know, Auburn's plan was to sky punt every punt uh, to, to Speedy. And then um, we get – he gets really one chance, you know, with with the kickoff. Then the balls are all over the place. You know, we get short kicks, squib kicks, um, try to kick it out of bounds. So, you know, when you start seeing that, then I think that tells you the amount of respect that uh, that other teams have had for him the last couple of weeks. And you know, you're talking about a guy as a freshman. So, Samuel, wrap us up. From his receiving end, how, how have you assess, would assess Speedy's play this year? You know, uh, he, he can be better. I mean, when he's touched the ball, he's, he's been okay. You know, he's got more yards than you think. Uh, you know, the guy missed a game completely. He had surgery. I think everybody forgets he had surgery about, what, five, six weeks ago? Right in the middle of the year, missed one game. And, and for him to be the guy that he is right now and explosive, uh, uh, you know, is is really a credit to him. The other thing, Sam, is here's another guy like Ricky who was not a receiver, really. He was a quarterback in high school. He is still learning how to run routes. He's still learning how to play the game. He's still learning, you know, how to avoid what, what how to escape different coverages. And uh, um, so, you know, he, he will continue to get better as a receiver. Probably the return game becomes come, comes easier to him, which naturally you, know, you get the ball in his hands. He doesn't have to do a whole lot, but use his ability, which he's got a tremendous amount of ability, and, and know where the return's supposed to be. You know, being a receiver is a, uh, has a little bit more to do with uh, coverage, route running, uh, time clock in your head, knowing what's happening, route adjustments, blitzes. You know that that's and, and so. Uh, he's improving. Um, you know, he's had his ups and downs against certain teams and, and gets frustrated sometimes. But uh, um, I look for him to continue and improve. And, you know, the, the, the offseason in spring will be big for him um, to become the kind of route runner that, that he needs to be. And if he can do that, then, you know, sky's the limit for him. And do you or anybody in the building ever call him by his real first name, or does everyone just call him Speedy? Devontae? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, only when his mom's around. <laughs> I usually just he, – he's, he's getting a few twos and deuce now. Because, so he's got all kinds of nicknames. No wonder he – you know, he, like I said, he's an explosive player in, in, um, in the return game. But, uh, you know, he's, he's going to continue to improve as a, as a route runner, and when that happens, it'll be – It'll be something exciting to see. All right, Coach, thank you.